All right, guys, so this is your um, short biography today, and I'll be reading about Jane Edna Hunt, Hunter, Home for, Hope for the Humble. And these are just like short biographies of ordinary people who did extraordinary things for God. All right, let's, Jane Edna Hunter, born in 1881, died in 1971, was born to tenant far farmers in South Carolina, working as a living servant. She was taught to read and write by her employer's daughter. She began form formal schooling at age 14 and completed nurse training program in her early 20s. <clears throat> she moved with friends to Cleveland, Ohio, where after paying $1.25 for a meal and a week of rent, she found she had only 25 cents left. No one wanted to hire a black nurse and she discovered firsthand the difficulty of living as a single black woman during the 20th century. And as Hunter made her way through the world, she relied on God, a, quote, a girl alone in the large city must need to know must need to know the dangers and pitfalls awaiting her end quote hunter wrote in hunter wrote in her autobiography a nickel and a prayer quote she must have she must have abiding faith in god's love and care for his own i was glad to have had a real christian faith taught me for in hours of distress and hunger he like a shepherd had led me on my way end quote Hunter eventually found a job and began raising money to help other women, asking a few friends to join her in saving five cents per week and praying for resources to start an agency to assist women moving to Cleveland to look for work. She, have, she founded what became the Phyllis Wheatley Association and built interracial partnerships while leading the charities. She graduated from law school and passed the Ohio bar exam. Her organization's model of offering lodging, offering lodging, job training, and employee assistance has been followed by some other organizations nationwide, and the Phyllis Wheatley Association still benefits Cleveland residents today. Hunter named her organization after a black woman born in 1753 in what is now the nation of Senegal in West Africa, kidnapped at the age of seven or eight. Phyllis Wheatley was transported to America aboard the slave ship Phyllis. The origin of her slave name, she took her surname from the wealthy Boston family who purchased her. The Wheatleys gave her an education in English, Latin, geography, history, the Bible, and more, and her skill as a student and poet won her international renown. Wheatley wrote eloquently on topics of Christian faith, American independence and broader poetic themes. Incredulous whites forced her to defend her literary skills in court in 1772 before examiners who included John Hancock, signer of the Declaration of Independence. Wheatley's poems on various subjects, religious and, and moral, was published in London the next year, making her the first African-American woman to publish a book. George Washington invited her to his home in March 1776 to thank her for a po poem she had written in his honor. Wheatley was legally freed from slavery in 1778 in accordance with her master's will, but was forced to take work as a, uh, a scholar scullery maid, S-C-U-L-L-E-R-Y, maid at a boarding house when her husband was jailed as a debtor in 1784. She and her infant son died in poverty within hours of each other late that year. Jane Edna Hunter sought to imitate this bold pioneer of progress, driven, accomplished, and persevering despite constant setbacks and struggles in order to benefit other African-American women. <clears throat> faith in God, quote, faith in God and hope for the future were the only assets I had, end quote, wrote Hunter. Yet despite her dire material circumstances, Hunter rose to become a beacon of hope. By the end of her life, she had honorary degrees from four universities and had served on the board of directors as a vice president of the NAACP. 
we began with one nickel each week became hundreds and thousands of dollars over the course of her lifetime. <clears throat> Hunter's humility, self-sacrifice, self and compassion did not result in any grand renown, but they did accomplish a lasting legacy. Her name, her name may be known by few, but her works continue to benefit many. Amen. So, um, you know, the title of this um, biography is um, Hope for the Humble. And I, I, you know, there's a lot of people in the world uh, right now that, um, you know, they've been humbled by circumstances or they've been humbled by, <clears throat> um, you know, health reasons, uh, tragedies, crises. Um, but this just kind of just kind of um radiates with me because even though i'm not i may not be known to many um you know a handful um but i'm known to my father and that's I, you know I, that's the best way to be all right guys love y'all have a great day <clears throat> i'll see you tomorrow bye bye